In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. What a beautiful time of the year, brothers and sisters, when we are able to celebrate the feasts. And the church is full of feasts. But not only celebrating the feasts of the church, but indulging and also dissecting the Word of God, which for us brings us so much strength, so much comfort, and so much hope. And thank God for the feasts and the Word of God and the Gospels. We celebrated on Monday the great feast of the falling asleep or the dormition of the Mother of God, the Mother of all Christians, the Mother of those who, hope, who, who are hopeless, the hope of all those who are hopeless, the comfort of those who are afflicted, the strength of those who are weak. How blessed we truly are to have this mother in our lives. A mother given to us by our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And in today's scripture readings, we hear of the other strength, the other arm that comes to us in time of need and in time of hope that of our Lord Jesus Christ coming when we need him the most but trying to also establish with us within us a firm foundation a strong faith a faith that does not waver and a faith that turns to Christ at every single time of their life in joy in sadness and in difficulties Jesus, after having, this, having done this great miracle of the five loaves and two fish, now sends his disciples away into a boat <coughs> to go to the other side of the country. And Jesus, after dismissing the crowd, leaves as well and departs for a mountain. And there he spends his night in prayer. Praying for whatever, who knows what. We don't know what he was praying for. All we know was that he was praying. And the disciples at the same time as our master praying, was praying, were in their own trouble. In the boat, the wind had gone against them. And the waves were fierce and the storm and they were in danger of drowning and as they were in danger there and worried about their own life they see a shadow coming towards them walking on the water and seeing the shadow they thought it was a ghost which made them afraid but they hear a voice a voice which they knew, the voice of our Lord saying that it is I. And Peter being the boldest among the apostles says, then if it is you, Lord, command that I come out to you on the waves. <coughs> and Jesus says, come. And Peter steps off the boat and onto the water and begins to walk towards Christ. His face looking directly at Christ and walking towards him. But the moment that the wind picked up and so did the waves, Peter leaves his attention, takes his attention off Christ and begins to sink. And there he shouts out and he says, Lord, save me. And Jesus takes out his arm and pulls Peter out of the water and said to him, You of little faith, why did you despair? And together they stepped into the boat 
and God commanded, Christ commanded that the winds now be still and everything calm. And seeing this great miracle, the apostles fell down at the feet of Jesus, worshipping him and saying, truly, you are the son of God. How powerful is our Lord and how much hope does he give to all of us? This gospel message is probably one of the strongest in the entire gospel of Christ showing him, showing us that he is present for each and every one of us in our lives. He's there for us. He's there for us in a world which is full of difficulties. And we see the power of prayer. Christ going and praying alone and being alone, but at the same time, knowing his disciples were in danger and communicating with them and being there for them in their time of need. Peter, being able to do what we consider impossible, but through the strength of God possible, because what is not possible for us is possible for God, begins to walk on the water. But the moment that his focus, that his attention is focused elsewhere, other than Christ, is the moment where he begins to sink. And the same with us. The moment that we take our attention of God, the moment we turn our face away from him, the moment that we forget him, is the moment that everything in our life begins to fall apart. We have become a generation of Christians that identify ourselves as Christians only by name and by tradition. We have forgotten what it means to look towards Christ for strength. We have forgotten what it means to have the grace of the Holy Spirit entering into our souls. We have forgotten how to pray. And the sad reality is that most Christians do not pray. Most of us do not pray. And if we do pray, usually our prayer is, Jesus, make sure or help my family be happy and healthy. Amen. And that's our prayer. Thinking that God is obliged to make us healthy and happy. And if for some reason we are not healthy and we are not happy, then God has abandoned us. This is not prayer. When the disciples asked the Lord how to pray, He gave us a prayer. He gave us a beautiful prayer. A prayer with so much meaning and a prayer which says absolutely everything that we need to say to God, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. The prayer that all of you know whether in Greek or in English, Padre Mon. But the prayer that slips off our tongue and we say it so quickly so that we, it can be over and done with. Because we've learned it off by heart and we think that this is prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, give us our bread. Amen. And I've done my duty for the night. I've prayed to God. Have you communicated with him? Have you spoken with him? And more importantly, has he spoken to you? Have you sat in silence to listen to his voice? Just like Jesus did today in the gospel, where he went away by himself. 
where nobody could see him and nobody could hear him. Away from every distraction, away from family, from friends, from TVs, from iPhones. I'm sure if he lived today, he would have had one as well. Away from all of that, so that he could be alone with God. And how many of us actually do that? How many of us give us that time every single day to be alone, just us with God? And then we wonder why. We wonder why the world is in the way that it is today, in the state that it is. We wonder why there is this epidemic. Every door that you knock on today, someone is suffering from some sort of depression, anxiety, mental illness. So many of us, us, because we have forgotten how to pray. We have forgotten how to ask God to give us strength. And we do not dare to ask God to forgive us for our sins. Me? Sins? What sins have I done? I'm just doing what everybody else is doing today that makes it normal. We have forgotten all of that. And therefore God does not punish us. We have begun to punish ourselves, our soul, our spirit, our bodies, our mind, all of that. We're punishing ourselves because we have forgotten what it means to communicate with God. And in today's epistle reading, and I'll say this and I'll finish so that I'm not dragging it too much. St. Paul tells us, build your foundations and it will be tested what are you going to choose to build your foundations with he says gold silver precious jewels hay sand when our foundation is built by sand and hay then the moment that the wind comes it's taken away and everything is destroyed our our foundations need to be solid And our rock, our foundation, is none other than God himself, our church. And that has not become a priority for us. And that's why we're falling apart as a family, as people, as society. We're falling apart because we are not built on solid foundations. First, we build on Christ And from Christ we build everything else and not the other way around. We don't build our foundations starting from our education or starting from our work or starting from what we like, our house, our car. They are not our foundations. If they are our foundations, then we have set ourselves up to be destroyed. Christ is our rock because Him He is perfect and unbreakable. And when we build on Him, then we have set ourselves up for salvation, for victory and for eternal life. May He stretch out His mighty hand to all of you who ask humbly for His help as we shout to Him, Lord, save me. And may He give us all victory in the kingdom of heaven. Amen.